It's time to kick ass and chew bubble gum. And I am all out of gum. Hello, welcome back to a Boring Revolution, your number one news source for everything in regards to the Boring Company. People criticising my introductions, wow, we're getting desperate, but uh, I've been firing off a few shots over the last two years at my favourite part-time scientist slash paper writer, and uh, yeah, one of them must have hit home because I caught him in a mistake, and it's just a great response by him because again he makes the same mistake then he makes some more mistakes then he gets very very emotional and you know what i like the fact that i can catch this guy put him under pressure and just kind of dig out all those little tiny mistakes that he's constantly making and cause him some real anxiety and the guy has dropped an absolute bomb of a video. It's, uh, yeah, he's not talking very favorably about either myself or the Boeing Company. But hey, you know what we're gonna do this wonderful day? We're gonna go look at that video. We're gonna play it back and we're gonna expose all the falsehoods, all the bizarre assumptions. Again, more assumptions by the foot. Um, yeah, and just, just kind of expose this part-time scientist. Let's have a look what he's had to say. Uh, the Boring Company website. This is currently what is up on the Boring Company website. You can see that it's actually joined up to the rest of the loop system, which I've got to be honest, would actually make a lot more sense. But hey, it couldn't possibly be that you're just quote mining this, you know, such that you can spin this as the, <laughs> the most terrible, egregious mistake made by Thunderfoot ever. I mean, I couldn't possibly have gone through all of this in the original video. So this is a major cock up by Phil. He knows that, yeah? He's been assuming that this is the route. However, he's not done proper research. I've said that before, I'll say it again, we do not work off two-year-old JPEG images. We just don't do that. We work off plans, plans that have been submitted to Clark County for approval. If those plans have been approved, then that is what is going to get built. And we know from all the construction pictures that what was built was not this. Let me elaborate with some plans because it's very, very difficult to convince this guy that he's actually wrong. He, he, he thinks that he's right, but everything else says that he's wrong. Here we go. Okay, so the plan on the left was approved by Clark County in around the middle of last year. These are the approved construction plans. There may be some slight changes to this, but overall, it's 98% correct. I take precedent over this particular image here on the left hand side over the image on the right hand side, which is simply a JPEG image from the Boring Company website. It is not official construction drawings. Therefore, who am I meant to believe? The people approving the drawing on the left or some web developer keeping this image on the Boring Company website and not updating it for two years. I go off what has been approved for construction, like everyone else who works in this particular industry. Another way to look at this is the following. If this is what has been built and there are no other plans for this particular site, then this might be what is here forever. There is no guarantee that anything else on this particular site will be approved or proposed. I can tell you now 100%, there are no other plans with the county for approval that involve linking this station to station uh, three. It's, it's just not 
being proposed at the moment. Now, I'm not saying that that won't happen, but until that is built, you should always assume that it's not going to happen. And you should definitely assume it's not going to happen if there are no approved plans for that stage of the build. Remember, the Boeing company is at the moment possibly working on another project in Las Vegas near to here. Therefore, that TBM is currently out of action. Thunderfoot has also become quite agitated at the fact that I'm criticising a lot of the useless science papers that he produces on a monthly basis. Here's what he had to say. Yes, that's called scientific research. That's how the knowledge of mankind moves forward. Bullshit. I mean, this is all computer Bullshit. generated from word crawls of my papers. Research fields, biochemistry and molecular Bullshit. biology, biophysics, Bullshit. chemistry, Hofmeister, guanidinium, protein, Bullshit. aqueous, nuclear science and technology, and physics. He's never achieved anything. He claims he wants to build his, his kind of uh, sodium-powered internal combustion engine, but he's not even produced one prototype. He can't design anything. He doesn't know any. Yeah, I'm not quite sure where all of this is coming from. And the answer is yes, both as a fuel and a hybrid fuel. So with a hybrid fuel, <laughs> we're going to start off with our sodium, which we're going to burn in some water specifically two waters, which is going to give us some sodium hydroxide and some hydrogen. Aerosols is interesting. And the smaller the particles, the better the bang for the buck you get out of your fuel. Which leads us to an interesting property of this choking evil smoke Wrong. that you get off burning sodium. Now, I should stress, there are some significant drawbacks of using sodium as a fuel. The most obvious one being you can't use it anywhere near where people live. Sodium hydroxide is basically drain clean. Yeah, so I just want to make this abundantly clear. Thunderfoot writes a lot of papers. That's correct. He is a scientist. Correct. Are any of those papers useful? No. The vast majority. In fact, I'm not even going to say the vast majority. That's too kind. All the papers that he's written are useless. It doesn't matter if all the scientists around him are patting him on the back, telling him he's doing a great job. The fact is... No one has any use for those papers. The best use for those papers, if you print them off, is to use them as a doorstop. I'm just being blunt and honest with people. Some people are easily impressed. I, I, I'm just not impressed with things like that. The, 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 the topics and, and the kind of uh, <laughs> conclusions of these papers are next to useless. I have no respect for that. And uh, no one really cares about that. He thinks it's important. You know, maybe that helps him sleep at night, but it's just... It's just not useful to anyone. It's not useful to society and no one really cares about it. Maybe if you wrote a million papers, there might be one paper that might have something that might be useful in it. But I doubt he's even going even to write, you know, a thousand papers. But hey, there you go. So another thing as well, he, 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 he's trying to make out as though he's not doing this sodium internal combustion engine now. But he's talked about it on two videos and he's trying to blow it up as though this is some kind of revolutionary idea that he has. Well, there you go. There's something that he could maybe patent, but he won't. He won't follow through with it. He might buy some equipment. He might do some experiments. When he realizes it's a dumb idea, everyone else realizes it's a dumb idea, just not him, then um, he'll give up on it. But, uh, you know, he said he's going to do something. He's not going to do that thing. It's a stupid idea. It doesn't matter how many experts he gets on board to help him. I doubt anyone will want to help him anyway, because he's an arrogant fool. But it's going to fail. The sodium-powered internal combustion engine is just ridiculously stupid. It's dangerous and it's non-economical. Everyone can see that. This really does sum up your typical defense from your Musk fan. Pick on some point of trivia, hype it up like it's a big deal, and then boom, you've discredited the source. And Wrong. therefore, you don't have to address any of the fundamental points that showed that Musk's idea was bullshit. And hallelujah, Musk can go on scamming for another day. Wrong. And in this case, it wasn't even a point of trivia. The original video uses references that are still up on the Boring Company website. I make it perfectly clear in the original video that I'm not entirely sure what they've dug. And 
that it really doesn't matter what they've dug because it makes no difference to the stupidity of the pro so again we're back to this i keep labeling labeling this point but it's just he it keeps def deflecting the blame on this jpeg image this is not a construction drawing this is a construction drawing this is what was under construction this is what has been built this is what is going to be opening listen it's going to be opening in three weeks time uh, and people actually are going to be riding this there is no station down south of here there is currently no planning approval going through for uh, an extension to that area although maybe at some point it might be done but i'm hearing that possibly it won't be done so until it happens we have to assume it won't happen um the, the reason i keep talking about this is that he in his original video the key premise of that video was that this particular route had a very very uh, large curve and because of that very large curve thunderfoot claimed that the speed in that tunnel would be limited to 20 miles an hour so the key premise of that video was that there was a very very large curve that was limiting the speed that was making the system super inefficient and it, it meant that you had to travel twice the distance to get from one side of the road to the other and that is just not the reality that <laughs> is just not like that this is what has been built this is the plans this is not going to change um you know th this will be here forever um the, the references don't matter so he, he, he keeps going on about the references he's saying i went on the boring company website i went on the boring company website and and there was this jpeg and i looked at the jpeg and and i knew i knew that this was the route that it was going and I, I was i was really excited by this route and it's just like what are you talking about bro this is old this is two years old if the boy company have made a mistake on their website and, and left this up and and, and not in, included the, the changed plan then you know yeah that's on the boring company but it's on you to to check that you're correct not don't just take one source this is not even a construction drawing so you shouldn't believe it uh, you, you 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 criticize people all the time for for putting out uh, crazy like 3d drawings and visualizations and things like that so so why why do you suddenly put all your faith in this one jpeg image you were wrong you got caught with your pants down and you made a stupid assumption take it like a man and just move on phil it's an underpass it's a single lane storm drain underpass. Yes, welcome to your uh, boring revolution. Well, first, let's take a look at his amazing, well-researched plans, which don't quite show 14 cars, but about five-ish. And if each one of those takes about three passengers each, because of course they all require drivers, that means that its maximum carrying capacity is going to be about 15 people in, what did he say, every, every 10 Wrong. minutes. So peak loading for this thing is it can carry 90 people per Wrong. hour from the hotel to the conference center. Meanwhile, a single bendy bus, given the drive time between the two is only about one minute, could Wrong. also make the exact same trip about once every 10 minutes and carry over 10 times as many people and not requiring five drivers, but only one. Or even taking his uh, optimistic scenario where they're going to have 14 drivers, well, that's 14 times more drivers than you need for the bus, and it would still only carry one quarter of the passengers. Yeah, so, so, so that was a typical Thunderfoot dumb fuckery or dumb footery because it's just wrong. A lot of that is wrong. First of all, he's using bizarre definitions of an underpass and a storm drain. Well, no, it's a tunnel. It's not an underpass. Uh, absolutely not. It's too long to be an underpass. And it's certainly not a storm drain. There's no water flowing through it. So he's bizarre. He throws out these bizarre words, you know, trying to get reactions out of people. It doesn't mean anything to me. Um, but then he throws away, throws out all these bizarre numbers that make no sense. He doesn't know how the system's gonna be running. I'm gonna to have to cover this in a future video where I basically create Thunderfoot's ideal trolley bus system and then put it up against my uh, Boeing company system and then we compare the two. He then 
he always makes this assumption, and I've noticed this on a few of his videos. The assumption is that if a bus turns up at station B, it will all, almost all the time, in fact all the time, will pick up the maximum number of passengers that it can accommodate and then go to station A, pick up the maximum number of passengers to go back. The, the, it's just not going to happen. Supply and demand, the, the, there's not going to be enough passengers there all the time. Yeah, so that bus is not going to be full all the time. Therefore, assuming that it's going to be full and it's going to have that, you know, exact same efficiency, even assuming that it's going to have that exact same efficiency, 90% of the time is, is a vast overstatement. Um, the Resorts World Hotel has 3,500 rooms. It, it's not going to be, it's going to be about 80, 85% full. Many of those people are not going to be going to the, the conference centre. Uh, many of them are just, just there for gambling and other things. So even if it's 1,500, 1,800 people, you know, are they all going to be moving at the same time? Probably not. You know, there's different things happening at different time at the conference centre. He's making vast assumptions. He's also vastly understating the, the maximum capacity of the system. Um, I know I said in my video, maybe that was a bit of a mistake on my part. I said every 10 minutes. It could be every four minutes. It could be every six minutes. It depends how you want to run it. But if there's no demand there for uh, moving people, you might as well do it every 10 minutes. I, I, don't, I just don't think... Um, it needs to be uh, that that kind of uh, frequent for, for vehicles picking up and dropping off people because there's not going to be the demand there. Another horrific uh, assumption that he made was he went onto Google Maps, possibly right at the end of the evening, and then looked at the, the travel times between Resorts World and the Convention Centre, and he thinks it's going to be like one to two minutes in a bus. Absolutely not. That's just miles off. It, 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 it might be five minutes, it might be eight minutes, it might be 15 minutes. That that road there is, is not easy easy travelling along there. It's going to be stop and go traffic. That's going to affect the efficiency of your system. I will cover all this in a future video. Uh, possibly do that on Monday, actually, just to kind of get that out. The, uh, and just prove to everyone that, that using a bus is not the be-all, end-all, super-duper solution that uh, this so-called super genius scientist thinks it is. Far from it. It's not actually going to be that efficient because it'll be quite empty a lot of the time and you've got to put a lot of infrastructure in there to do a trolley bus anyway let's hear what he had to say at the end how i've debunked gazillions of scams and grifts over the years and one of the reasons why i make so many videos on mask is because of people like you because even when it's obvious the most menial of intellects that a bus service would wrong circles around elon musk's underpass you're sat here defending it like he's just invented wrong bread really just take a long hard look in the mirror sometimes you're defending slow moving single lane taxis driving through an underpass so this goes back to his core kind of thought process surrounding elon musk elon musk is an evil guy elon musk is one of these bad boy billionaires and he's out to shaft the world and trick everyone. And he's a con artist. And my name is Phil Mason. And I am one self-righteous bastard. And I know everything about everything. And you should listen to me. Because I have, you know, I, I know everything that should be done to make this world a perfect place. And in reality, he doesn't actually know very much about anything. Like I keep saying, he's got his specialist areas. Maybe a couple more than I thought he had. But in reality, it, <laughs> he's still writing useless papers. And on top of those useless papers that he's writing, he does his useless videos. Criticising Tesla, which is the largest electric vehicle company in the world and is dominating the sector. He criticises SpaceX when it produces the most revolutionary rockets. And then he criticises all the other endeavours that Elon Musk does. Because he thinks he's better than Elon Musk. In fact, what Phil does is he thinks he's better than everyone. That's why he thinks he should be the person that you listen to. But in reality, he's not. He's a fucking loser. And the key point to remember here before I conclude this beautiful video is that we have already won. You know, we have already won if you're looking at the last 
five to ten years or so and the next ten years will be an even bigger victory for ourselves Tesla is going to keep growing the Tesla semi is going to be a great product the Roadster is going to be a great product uh, solar glass roof is already a great product the solar battery power walls um, uh, are already great products that will be expanded everything is going in the right direction uh, time will be good to people like ourselves time will not be good for people like Thunderfoot who will get found out very quickly over the next two to five years very very quickly so let's conclude the video that's what's going to happen over time we will win out and I'm not going away by the way I'm going to keep producing videos all the time with more and more videos great content shooting down stupid assumptions and idiots who make dodgy videos with bad data okay everyone have a great evening and goodbye Or one of those um, <coughs> poor insoles living in a basement. We've got to take big chances in order for the potential for a big positive outcome.